Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 96 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam and today's video we're going to focus on the topics of square numbers and that's squaring numbers and also square roots and then also cube numbers, cubing numbers and cube roots. So it's very important you know these topics and you know what your square numbers are and you know what your cube numbers are and then you're able to work out how to square a number and cube a number and also that you're confident how to do it on using a calculator as well. So in today's video, we're going to go through what those mean, your square numbers, your cube numbers, what they are. We're going to go through some questions and there'll be some questions for you to try yourself as well. So remember to pause the video to give those questions a try and then see how you got on. So I really hope you find this video useful. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at square numbers and there's 96 days to go into a GCSE Mavs exam. And we're going to start by looking at square numbers, then square roots, cube numbers and cube roots. So let's look at our square numbers. So our square numbers are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, and so on. And I recommend that you learn these ones off by heart. So to get your square numbers, well, you start off with 1, and you do 1 times 1 is 1, then you do 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4, uh, 4 times 4 is 16, and so on. So square numbers are what you get whenever you multiply those whole numbers by themselves. So for instance, uh, the next one would be 13 times 13 is 169, and so on. So it's important to learn these square numbers off by heart because you might have a question where you've maybe got a circle, there's maybe a list of numbers and you've got to circle the square numbers and so on. So it's important to know these square numbers. But it's also important to be able to square numbers. So for instance, if we had something like this where you've been asked to work out 15 squared. Now the first question here I'm going to do without a calculator and then I'm going to show you in this question beneath how to do it with a calculator. So here we've got work out 15 squared. So because this little symbol means squared, it means multiply by itself. So we're going to do 15 multiply by 15. And feel free to pause the video now and to work that out. So if we wanted to work out 15 squared, we would do 15 multiplied by 15. And I'm going to use column multiplication to work that out. So 5 times 5 is 25. So let's put our 5 down and carry our 2. And 5 times 1 is equal to 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. So 15 multiplied by 5 is 75. Now we need to multiply by 10. So let's put our 0 down. 1 times 5 is equal to 5. And 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So we just need to add these together now. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. So put a 2 down and carry a 1. And 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So 15 squared would be equal to 225. And it's important to know that this symbol is the squared symbol and it means to multiply something by itself. Okay, so now let's have a look at a question where we are using a calculator. So here we've got 1.4 squared. So that means we're going to do 1.4 multiply by itself. So 1.4 multiplied by 1.4. Now, of course, you could write down 1.4 multiplied by 1.4, type that into your calculator and see what you get. But it's important to know also where the squared button is. Now, if you've got this type of calculator, this is the squared button. So you type in 1.4. So you type that in like so, and then you would press that squared button and it would come up on your calculator display as 1.4 squared. And then you just press equals and then it would give you your answer of 1.96 and that's it. If you've got a different calculator, so if you've got this model of calculator, your squared button's there again, that X with the little two above it. If you've got a different calculator, so perhaps this one, you would then have a squared button and it's there. It's a little white box with a squared above it. So you, again, you can press 1.4 and then press that button and then press equals or exe and then that would work out 1.96 and that's it. Okay, just so you've got a chance to do one of yourself on the calculator, can you please now work out what 64 squared is? So can you work out what 64 squared is on your calculator and see what you get? And whenever you do that, you should get an answer in your calculator of 4096. So that's it. So if you type in 64 squared on your calculator and press equals, you get 4096. And it's important to know where that squared button is. Okay, now let's have a look at square roots. So here we've got work out, and this is the square root symbol. This means the square root of 64. And what that means is it's saying, what number do you multiply by itself to get 64? What number do you square to get 64? Well, 8 times 8 is 64. So the square root of 64 would be 8. And that's it. Okay, next, next we're going to have a look at now using a calculator. So it's important to know where the square root button is on your calculator. So the square root button is here on this calculator, as you've got the little square root symbol and the little white box beneath it. So if I wanted to do this question, what I would do is I'd press that button, then type in 33.64, and then press equals, and then get the answer. Likewise, if I had this calculator, again, the square root button, it looks the same. You've got the square root sign and the little white box above it. Or if you've got a calculator that looks something like this, the square root sign is there. And again, you press that button, type in 33.64, press equals, and I get the answer. So can you now use your calculator and work out the square root of 33.64 and see what you get? Okay, so you type it into your calculator and then you'd press equals and the answer should be 5.8. So if you've got that, well done.
And let's have a look at our cube numbers. So our cube numbers are what we found when we multiply a number by itself and by itself again. So one cubed, this is the cube symbol. One cubed is one times one times one is one. Two cubed is two times two times two, which is eight. Three cubed is three times three times three, which is 27. Four cubed is 64. And five cubed is 125. And I recommend learning those off by heart because again, you might have a question where maybe you've got a circle or underline or find the cube numbers. And also, I would also learn that 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. So a thousand is also a cube number. Okay, so there are your cube numbers. And again, I recommend that you learn those. Okay, so we've looked at our cube numbers. Now let's have a look at cubing numbers using our calculator. So here we've got calculate 17 cubed. So this is the cube symbol and say and work out 17 cubed. So we could do 17 multiplied by 17 multiplied by 17, but we might not want to type that in our calculator, take a bit of time. So let's have a look at our calculators. So in this calculator, we would tap in 17 and then press the cubed button there. And then we get 17 cubed and then you'd press equals and then that will give you your answer. If you've got a calculator that looks like this one, again, you would type in 17 and then press the cubed button, which this time you would actually need to press. So you type in 17, you then press shift and then press the squared button and that would give you the cube symbol. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could actually press 17 and then press the power button and then type in three in the power. So you've got a choice. You could either press shift and then the square button and get the cubed or you can press the power button and then just type in three. And then if you've got a calculator like this one, what I would actually do is just use the power button button so I type in 17 I press the power button there the power button and then you could press then type in 3 and then you do 17 cubed so get your calculator out and work that out and see what you get so whenever you work out 17 cubed on your calculator you should get that's equal to 4913 so 17 cubed is 4913 okay so that's cubing numbers so we've also we looked at squaring and square rooting now let's have a look at our cubing and cube rooting so finding out what number was cubed so here we've got a question that says find the cube root of eight so remember that two times two times two is eight so that means the cube root of eight is saying what number cubed is eight the answer would be two so the cube root of eight is two Okay, now we've been asked to work out the cube root of 125. So the cube root symbol, it's like the square root symbol with just a little three there. So that's the cube root symbol. And saying, what number do you multiply by itself and by itself again to get 125? Now we should know the answer is five by learning our cube numbers already. But on this calculator, the cube root symbol's there. So what you would do is you'd press shift and then you would press the square root button and then you get the cube root symbol. It would look something like that. Then you would type in your 125 and press equals. Likewise, if you've got a calculator that looks like this, again, you'd press shift and then the square root button. It would give you your cube root symbol and then you would type in 125 and then press equals. And then if you've got a calculator like this one, you can see here above the square root, you've actually got the, the other roots button. So what you can do is press shift and then press the square root button. It would bring up this. You would then type in the three in there. Then you would use your arrows to then move it down here and type in 125 and press exe or equals. And then you should get the answer of five. And whenever you pressed equals, you would get an answer of five. Okay, just to make sure you can use your calculator to do that, can you now please work out the cube root of 729? So use your calculator and work out the cube root of 729 and see what you get. And whenever you work that out, you should have got an answer of nine. So nine cubed is 729, and that's it. Okay, so here's an exam style question. So feel free to press pause now to try this question yourself. Okay, so the question says, list any square numbers shown in the box. So let's consider our square numbers. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 16, 25, fantastic, 25 is a square number, 5 times 5, 36, 49, 64, 81, 81, fantastic, so 81 is a square number, 9 times 9, and 100. So there are square numbers, 25 and 81, so hopefully you got those. And the next part says write down any cube numbers in the box. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so 8 is a cube number. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so that's a cube number. 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64, no. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, so that's it. So the cube numbers show them were 8 and 27, so hopefully you got those as well. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, so here's another question. Feel free to pause the video now to give this question a try. Okay, so the question said to work out 7 squared plus 2 cubed. So I'm going to do this without a calculator. So 7 squared, 7 squared is equal to 49. So 7 times 7 is 49. Now 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8, so plus 8. And 49 plus 8 would be equal to 57. So that means that 7 squared plus 2 cubed is 57. And if you've done that in your calculator and you typed in 7 squared plus 2 cubed, you'd also get that equal to 57. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So the last question says, Martha says that when you cube a number, the answer will always be larger than the number you start with. Explain where Martha is wrong. So feel free to pause the video now and to give this question a try if you want to. 
Okay, so she says that when you cube a number, you always get an answer that's larger than the number you started with. I'm automatically thinking of one cubed because one times one times one, one multiplied by one multiplied by one is equal to one. So one cubed is equal to one. That's not actually bigger than what we started with. It's exactly the same. Likewise, if we cubed zero, zero times zero times zero is zero. And actually, if you choose a 0 point number, for instance, 0 0.5 cubed, well, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 cubed is equal to 0.125 so that would actually get smaller so you can actually cube a number and get a smaller result if it's a decimal number such as 0 point something so explain why Martha's wrong well you just explain well if she started with one she would get the same answer of one if she started with zero and you cubed it she would get zero which is the same or if she chose a 0 point something number then the answer would be actually smaller so just explain something like that and that's it so it's very important to remember what your square numbers are one four nine sixteen twenty five thirty six forty nine 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, and so on. Do you remember what those square numbers are? I remember up to 144 off by heart, and then I recommend the students, as you know, we recover, but always recommend the students not up to 144 off by heart, and then if you need to work out any other square numbers, you can work it out if you need to. Um, but it's important that you know what your square numbers are, your cube numbers, so one times one times one is one, two times two times two is eight, three times three times three is 27, four times four times four is 64, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. They're the ones that I recommend that you remember off by heart. And also 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. The fact that 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, and also 1,000 is a cube number. So they're important things that I would say to remember. Also, it's important to remember how to use your calculators to be able to work out your squaring numbers, cubing numbers, your square root numbers, and your cube root numbers, and so on. So I really hope you find this video useful. I uh, remember to be doing your five a day. So if you're doing GCC foundation, I would recommend at this point you should be doing your numeracy five a day and your foundation five a day, and also to be given your foundation plus a five a day if you're aiming for that grade four or five. Just oh, oh I forgot to mention in the description below, I've put a link to the practice questions on square numbers and cube numbers. I really hope you find those useful. The more practice you do on this topic, the better. But I really hope you find these videos useful. And remember, at three o'clock tomorrow, the next one will be coming out on YouTube. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.